I wanted to cover Sevrog because he's been a hero I've had a lot of fun playing with. He's got a root great for catching enemies, a knockback which is absolutely insane considering how valuable positioning is on Monolith and a dash to escape or initiate. His abilities also do a lot of damage because of his passive, granting him health and damage as he collects stacks. This allows you to still do a fair bit of damage late game while building relatively tanky as your team's front line. I start with a health potion, jungle drink and a guard token. You can place a deep ward like I do, this is what the spare guardians ward is for. Just remember, don't take any abilities because you might fuck up and the enemies will be waiting for you and if that happens, at least you can use your phantom rush to escape. If you manage to get the ward and then recall then you can start with your health pot, jungle drink and guard token as normal and take your siphon ability to build those stacks. The reason I place the ward here is because I know the enemy jungler will eventually do their green camp and get low giving me the opportunity to kill them. Something you always want to be doing is grabbing the river buffs. You can let your mid lane hero have it if they do need the mana regen. How it is tells me to retreat but honestly the jungler should be taking the stealth buff, it is so much better. He would have gone off to middle lane and wasted it trying to last hit minions while a jungler can get a whole lot more value out of it like sitting and watching a Sevrog doing green buff. And then stealing his green buff and taking his life, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. With the enemy jungler dead, you can take all their camps because no one is going to contest you, they fear you, you just wrecked their Sevrog and they can't do shit about it, so take a camp or two, but don't get too greedy because bad things happen when you get greedy. The most valuable tip I can give you, and this really applies to any jungle hero, is to kite the minions. This is exactly what I'm doing here. You can see I started with 486 health and I finished with 418 health, taking only 68 damage. Ignore the fact that Bellica took the last hit, she just won't leave me alone the bitch. When I do a camp without kiting it however, I start with 436 health and I finish with 209. Yes, I took 227 damage from not kiting a camp, basically 159 extra damage because I didn't kite the minions and that means I would have to go back to base instead of staying to farm. So kite the minions and you'll be able to take roughly 2 or 3 extra camps. I used this deck pretty much exclusively in the jungle but I was forced to solo lane with it one game and actually did pretty well. I'd recommend switching to a health token and a guard token when you start as this will allow you to take your white camp while the lane is being pushed away from you and stay in your lane if you do take a bit of poke. Sevrog's route is more about anticipating where the enemy is going than where they currently are. I mean of course if some idiot is gonna stand still just so you can root him and kill him well then he deserves it. But most of the time you need to land your root where they are heading. For example here I root Murdoch, I place the root further away from him but he still got rooted towards the edge of the circle and because of that increased movement speed it's actually not that difficult to dodge so anticipating where the enemy is gonna be is key. You can root enemies under their tower and then phantom rush forward and knock them out of position towards your allies and then retreat. This is something I encourage you to do. You will take some damage and this is why we build Sevrog somewhat tanky. I like to get my Spike, Boneplate and Thorn Greenweave before my amulets but that depends on the enemy's team composition. If they have little ability damage then getting basic armor and health first is fine. Remember we get loads of health from our adamant edges anyway. Now I'm sure I don't have to tell you how to gank but man I don't see a lot of people taking advantage of what is essentially a guaranteed kill. The offlane hero is always under pressure, most good offlane heroes will give their tower up rather than dying. I always check the offlane's camp because most likely if they're not in lane they're doing this camp, it just so happens that he wasn't so I landed an amazing route, fuck you 200 ping and then kill Sevrog. The point here is that you should always be checking this camp. I've gotten so many kills just from this camp alone. If you find yourself in a 1v1 scenario with a carry that's relatively level on card points you are most likely going to win but I always check what the enemy has equipped. I see that Murdoch has blink shot, what does this mean? It means he has two escapes, blink shot and his knockback. While I only have one ability, Phantom Rush, to catch up to him and then he can kite me. I either have to land my route which I probably won't because lag, no seriously lag. I head on over, pick up the black buff and then go in for a gank. I of course miss my route cause shit, I suck. 
but Murdoch doesn't do enough to get me away from him and it's a relatively easy kill. You can see how useful the black buff was though, taking him pretty low really fast. Remember, Sevrog is a tank. I know he might not feel like one, in fact tanks feel completely different on Monolith than they did on Legacy, but tanks on Monolith are there to soak up damage and increase the time to kill. Carries and casters get shredded so fast, but if you can soak up the damage for a couple extra shots, that's a couple extra auto attacks or abilities your allies can get out and hopefully they get the crucial kills. Don't be afraid to die for the cause, tanks will die, that's just how it is. If you die to keep your carries alive, well shit, you're already on the path to becoming a better player. I know this is a shorter video that I usually do but being on holiday makes it difficult. I hope the video was still informative as always, maybe it wasn't as funny because I'm jet lagged as fuck but smash that thumbs up button if you did enjoy. Remember the full build and build order is in the description below.